Bleem Truth here, the Cod Father himself, bringing you another video. Uh, this is going to be a spicy one. I think you guys will quite enjoy it. First of all, I have some Dead by Daylight Chucky gameplay for you here. Hope that's okay. If it is, a like rating would be appreciated. I don't know if you guys want to see this or not. I need to take a break from Call of Duty lest I use my bottle of Clorox in the laundry room as a, a drink mixer. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I need to... Take that a step back. It, fun, fun fact, too, it's already on sale. I think it's already been on sale, but it went on sale again. If, if you own, like, a previous Call of Duty, they're giving you, like, 30% off or something, I, I think I saw. With all that said, though, don't buy it. It's a trap. <laughs> anyway, let's get into the meat and potatoes here. Christopher Judge, the actor that plays Kratos in God of War, epic voice this man has, uh, he made a joke at Call of Duty's expense last night. Call of Duty's basically become a laughing stock lately, and uh, it wasn't even nominated for the first time in forever. Was not even nominated for anything. I think since its inception, was not nominated for a single thing at the Game Awards. So Christopher Judge comes up on stage. Last year, he had a very long acceptance speech. I think it was eight minutes long or something like that. <laughs> he joked it was actually longer than this year's Call of Duty campaign. And it's a little lighthearted jab. This year's Call of Duty campaign has been just trashed by pretty much everyone, uh, critics and users alike. It's also incredibly, incredibly short. You can beat it in like three Three hours? Less than three hours, I think. I think I read somewhere you could speed run it in like an hour. <laughs> so, yeah, seventy dollar game here, and uh, I thought it was funny. A pretty lighthearted jab, I, I want to say overall. But the Call of Duty devs just couldn't keep their little mealy mouths shut on Twitter. You know, uh, you, you'd think you'd think that you'd have thicker skin being a Call of Duty dev or being someone that just associates with Call of Duty in general. I mean, you got to kind of have a thick skin. The community can be quite passionate, quite angry, quite toxic even. But no, they still, they can't take a joke from like a peer. A, a very, very obvious joke. And it's hilarious. Even uh, Barry Sloan, the guy who plays Captain Price, he, he got the most mad, I think, and he actually said this. It basically called Christopher Judge a clown. Uh, and Barry Sloan, like, your claim to fame is having a mustache and saying, like, it's Captain Price in time in one of the worst games most of us on this channel would agree we've ever played. I don't know. Personally, I'd sit this one out. I'd sit this one out and just accept it as a joke because that's clearly what it is. Ah, just no reason to get this butthurt over it. No reason whatsoever. Very thin skin. But um, let's read what some of the other actual devs had to say. It's not just this guy. It's, it's the actual devs. Funny, but yeah, the metrics that COD absolutely destroys all of the God of War games, probably combined, to be honest, and is also equally laughable, if not more. Ooh, spicy, spicy. And this person says, imagine having short user engagement once your game is consumed. Can't relate. Oh, oh my goodness. And then this person's more of a just a sad violin type. Honestly, as COD developers, we've heard way worse, but we don't expect it from a peer at an event that's supposed to be celebrating this year's achievements in gaming, especially with all the information that was leaked about its development. Oh, let me let me just say something to all you guys right now, okay? I mean, all you devs out there that may be upset over this joke, let me say something to you. Get the fuck over it, you fucking pussies. It doesn't matter. If you're so proud of your game, of your two and a half hour campaign that every single person crapped on, if you're so proud of it, then I don't know. This shouldn't bother you, you know? Uh, I've been doing YouTube for 16 years. Every single day, I read some negative comment. Several comments per day, usually. I, I can't even post, like, my dog. I posted my dog and said, like, hey, I had a really good November. Thank you guys for the support on the channel. And people were like, yeah, posting your dog's not going to give you more credibility, pal. That was an actual comment I got. And I'm just like, what? I'm just posting my dog. Like, he's cute, man. I, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> this is so weird. Instead of whining on Twitter about a joke, maybe you should take to heart the fact that you weren't even on this year's award nominations. That That's more insulting than what Christopher Judge said, is it not? Tell me when I'm telling lies, being left off the first time in 
in history, Call of Duty has been left off of these nominations even. Because this game, it, it's not even a game. I, I think they're like, this is a DLC. It's not even a game. I'm sorry, but it's not. Modern Warfare 3 is a DLC. It, it, it's a $70 DLC at that. If you don't like people downplaying what you're doing in the gaming industry, here's what you do. Are you ready? Make something so good they can't they can't talk shit. That's how you do it. Next next time, make something so good. Be so good that if they even try to 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 downplay what you've done, people are going to laugh at him be like, "What? What? That's like saying Gordon Ramsay's not a great chef." You know what I mean? Like do something so good, it's 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 not able to be criticized seriously. That's how you beat it. You don't whine on Twitter. You don't. No, you don't. I, I mean, you make a better game, you know? If you want people to stop complaining like me, you know what you do? You make a better game. And I really don't use Twitter much anymore, but I had to tweet this out, and I, I might delete it, but I had to tweet this out. Just to, just to clap back at this dev, because this is not something you, you know what I mean? Like, this is not something you, you take offense over. So I just had to kind of give him a reality check. And I'll, I'll leave him anonymous, but I said, COD, a multi-platform, multiplayer game, including the outdated consoles, versus God of War, a single console-exclusive, single-player game. COD games are sold in the discount bin and are obsolete after a year to the point where retailers have to have dedicated shelves to hold them all. This is in response to the short user engagement once your game is consumed. I mean, these COD games are are consumed within a few months and then put on the discount shelves. I remember trying to sell a copy of Vanguard to GameStop and they wouldn't take it because they had so many. They had literally like 25 copies all from different platforms on the shelves. They wouldn't take it. They had too many. I haven't seen that since I tried to sell the Burger King game Big Bumpin' to them. And they were like, we can't take this. There's too many Burger King games on the shelves. Big Bumpin'! Say it with me. Big Bumpin' is of the same ilk as Call of Duty Vanguard, pretty much, as far as the amount of people that didn't want it. It's, it's insane to me. It's insane to me that people are going to get upset when they should be like, you know what? You're right. We, we, you know, had problems this year. We shouldn't have released a game this year, truth be told. Or maybe just like, I don't know say what's really going on, like we're under such a time constraint that we can't possibly make a game the quality of God of War and we never will. We, we never will get that time, straight up. You know, like, there's no humility, it's all ego. I mean, these devs have hidden themselves, shielded themselves from criticisms and the community so much that the first time a peer makes a lighthearted joke at their expense, they lose their mind. They, they just start crying on Twitter incessantly. Am I lying? Tell me when I'm telling lies there, seriously. And I haven't even covered, I haven't even covered what they've messed up with this new season. Look at this from Modern Warzone on Twitter. And this is not me. This is not me saying it. If you're thinking like BT, you're just looking for things to complain about with this new season. It's fire, man. Look, guys, I don't deal with like, oh, I'm having a good experience, so everything's fine. I don't do that. My experience doesn't matter. It's everyone's experience. Everyone collectively. Because guess what? The world does not revolve around me. It doesn't. So the people that say like, well, my game's fine, so it's not an issue, are they're egotistical maniacs, and they can go fuck themselves. Straight up. Let's just look at what Modern Warzone had to say on Twitter, shall we? Not getting on Warzone until this shadow ban issue is fixed. I'm seeing like 90% of the Warzone scene tweeting out they've caught a ban, and I'd rather just avoid it all together and this is after the fact this is after the fact this shadow ban issue it, no reason by the way from what i understand it's no reason if you just play you're liable to get shadow banned by the automated shadow ban bot or something i don't know either that or everyone's collectively cheating either way it's sad it's pathetic and it grosses me out but no it gets it gets worse this is after the fact that for an entire day battle.net players couldn't even play the game Call of Duty updates had to say we're working to mitigate matchmaking issues for Battle.net players. 
Battle.net players can expect some improvement over the next few hours. Basically, they pushed out like an update on that platform alone, so it broke matchmaking because they're on different versions. And also, they broke shaders. Shaders are broken. Uh, Interstellar looks like a PS2 game now. Um, it's not on the Trello board. They, they don't understand why it's not on the Trello board because it's very, very obvious. If you just play the game, it looks not good. Um, I mean, like, people are proud of this. You know, pe people are proud of this update that comes out that breaks the game. And if you look at the actual player numbers on Steam, again, they're just dipping. Like, I, I expected a huge surge with Warzone 3 and Modern Warfare 3 going on sale or whatever, and... It's barely gone up. It looks like just a weekend pump or something. It looks like crypto, like some crypto scam that, you know, people are like, oh, buy, uh, buy penis coin. Everybody buy penis coin. And it goes way up. And then just like, you know, with time, ED takes its toll. Penis coin goes straight back down. It goes flaccid. It's like that. Um, I would not be proud of this. I, I could not be proud of this. Now, if I worked on Call of Duty and everything went flawless with this update, and everything went as it should, and we had a game, the quality of, like, Black Ops 2, which had three amazing modes, a great campaign, a great multiplayer, a legendary multiplayer, and a legendary zombies mode, then yes, yes, I would brag a little bit, but what does, <laughs> what does Modern Warfare 3 have? What does Warzone 3 have? Warzone 3 has the majority of the player base getting shadow banned because they don't test these updates. There are no QA testers from, from my understanding. Uh, it's got a single player campaign that you can beat drunk in like two hours. And it's got a multiplayer component that's just what the multiplayer component should have been last year when they hyped that game up as the most advanced Call of Duty of all time. Modern Warfare 2 is just Joe Secott's wet dream. Joseph Secott and his wife Dora concocted that little family member after a night of passion in the back of a Home Depot in the lumber aisle. So, yeah, th th that's it. And honestly, it's still not good because all these things they've done that are good, and I do have to commend Sledgehammer, I will give them credit where credit's due here. I will give them credit, and I have before in previous videos. I swear to you, I have. Uh, you can go back and watch. But I think they're doing a good job overall. When I really looked over yesterday's update patch notes or whatever, they're doing a lot. They're doing a lot in a short amount of time. And I am, I am quite appreciative of it. I really am. But the fact of the matter is, is all these changes don't matter when you break the game every update, when the core game problem being skill-based matchmaking, you know, bugs and glitches and problems and stuff like that are, are just there all year. You know, like... It's like getting a fresh coat of paint on this car with a blown engine and cut brake lines. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you do. You can fill that car with... It's like it's like Pimp My Ride. Remember that show with Exhibit X to the Z? So, <laughs> it's like, hey, we took your 87 Honda with no engine and replaced the engine with like 50 PSPs, dog. And the person's like, well, that's cool. That's great. But how, how do I drive it? Exhibit, I can't drive the car! You replaced my wheels with, with Nintendo DS's, my dude! My steering wheel is a 60-inch plasma TV, and my doors have been stolen and pawned off to a man named Joseph Bartholomew Secott. I have no car doors. It's like that. I want the core of the game to be good. The only thing I care about, the only thing I care about, Content, be damned. The only thing I care about is them addressing matchmaking. And really, that's it. Everything else comes secondary. I don't care about anything else. And not only do I want to see them address matchmaking, I want to see them fix matchmaking. I want to see them talk about it, let us know how it works, fix it, give us good pings, talk about this bot issue. Are there bots in the multiplayer or not? I'm convinced there are. I would really like to know, because not knowing is scummy. Not knowing how the matchmaking works is scummy. You know what I mean? All this, it's just, I, I don't like it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this Chucky gameplay, though. I, I'm really liking this new Dead by Daylight update. Again, it's an update that comes out. Chucky comes out, voiced by the legendary Brad Dourif. It's, it's great. I don't know, man. It's fun. It's great.
I'm gonna let this ginger lady who prays to crystals, probably a COD dev, honestly, I'm gonna let her go with, you know, <laughs> ginger supporting ginger, someone said in the post-game chat here. Give her the hatch. And uh, this one goes out to my boy Joe Secott, right there, that middle finger. Thank you, Chucky. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will catch you on the next one. Let me know what you think of all this in the comment section below. I'll see you later. Have a good one. Peace out. Advice? Oh!